So I think my favourite thing about the undergraduate awards was it was an academic event but it wasn't kind of covered in this formality that some academic events have. Um, it was really enjoyable and I got to speak with a lot of different people about a huge range of different things that I would have never really put my mind to before. Hey, I'm Emma and today I'm going to tell you about my experience with the Undergraduate Awards. So the Undergraduate Awards is a global competition where people who are in their final year of university can submit their best work, then potentially get recognition if it's the best. So they've got global winners, they've got regional winners, and then they've got highly commended awards. So I first heard about the award when I was in the start of my final year at university. We'd had some previous success from a university in the past and they were really encouraging everyone who was getting an A grade to submit their thesis for judgment. So I'd finished my finals and I had a little reminder in my phone to submit to undergraduate awards and I just thought, why not? So the application process was actually pretty simple. All I basically needed to do was make all of my work anonymous. So I just went through and just control f for my name, for my university, for any supervisors and like the acknowledgement section I just completely took out because um, that had names in it. And there was 25 categories to choose from so mine was quite simple for me to choose, I just picked the life science category but I'm sure there's a category for everyone, there was like arts, law, science categories, languages, um, histories, yeah, categories for everyone. So submitting was super simple. So I spoke to my supervisor before and kind of got permission, just said, is it okay if I submit to undergraduate awards? Um, and they said yes, but because my work was kind of science research that was planning to be published, we ticked a box in the application that was to not publish it on the website. There was the option that um, the winners could have their work published. Um, so we took the no option and that was completely fine, everything remained confidential. Yeah, so the timing process, I submitted on the 12th of June and I heard back on the 28th of August that I'd been awarded with highly commended grade. So the grading system was there was global winners in each of the 25 categories, then there was regional winners and then there was highly commended. So all of the winners were then invited to the Global Undergraduate Summit which is held in Dublin. So this is basically an award ceremony where there's kind of inspirational TED Talks and there's people who have won the undergraduate awards in previous years and there's different keynote speakers and everyone gets together and listens to talks, have little workshops, um, there's lots of food and yeah, it was a really good event. So originally I wasn't too convinced that I wanted to go to the undergraduate awards, if I'm honest, um, because of the price tag, it was quite expensive. I think it was like 590 something euros which was a lot of money um so in the beginning i was like eh can't afford that but very luckily my university offered to pay for me and a group of people i think there was five or six people from my university who'd also won an award so my university paid for all of us to have a nice trip to dublin to attend the award ceremony so we got on a plane and headed over to dublin and the year that we went the award summit was held in croke park which is a football stadium so we had actually stayed in a hotel that was more near the centre of town um, and that was fine, it was like a 15 minute walk from our hotel to um, the venue. On the first day we did get quite lost but we got there in the end and it was fine. So the other thing is the global winners were all given a free trip to attend the summit. So that was fantastic, all the global winners got paid for and I think they were the ones that were put up in the hotel that was right opposite the venue, um, which was fab. So on the first date basically we went in and we all got given a lanyard with our name on it and we got given a little goodie bag. So I've still got the bag that we were given um, a few goodies in. So it was just a little tote bag um, and in it we were given like pens um, and a little notebook which was super nice. Some people were taking notes about connections they were making and some of the interesting speeches. So basically the day's program was talks and chat. So okay so I found the program um, and basically there was opening the institution, working together to improve university and workplace access and then they had a panel, they had some talks at the beginning and then they kind of opened a panel discussion with questions from everyone. They also had combating crises, practical and critical approaches to sustainability. And then there was constructing the future, technological advancements and the fourth industrial revolution. 
So they have these three planned themed sessions. They also had talks from the global winners, which I think were maybe like 20 minutes long. And then they also had like five minute quick talks. So I was really interested in doing a flash talk myself. And I just emailed, I think some people were selected to be asked to do a talk. I was a little bit cheeky. I just emailed and was like, hey, is there any chance that you're interested in me doing a talk? Um, and the lady was super lovely. She emailed back. I think her name was Jane. And she kind of slotted me in on one of the talk sessions, which was lovely. So yeah, I slotted in for one of the five minute talks. And I think they wanted like three PowerPoint slides. So I was kind of pitching it as like a TED talk. You know, show the impact of your work and have nice pictures to go with it. Because there was people from every of the categories, I was doing a talk to like non-scientists um, and then any of the scientists who were still interested, they came to talk to me and I had some really great conversations afterwards with other people who were doing immunology. So yeah, I think for the for the speeches, you know, I didn't think anyone needed to go in detail about all of their work um, and the nitty gritty of it. So. Yeah, I'm trying to keep everyone on board even if they weren't a scientist. So I really enjoyed doing my talk. I'd emailed my slides over a few days before um, and then there was kind of no practice talks. If it was your talking session everyone just lined up at the side and then there was a few seats on stage so everyone just moved along um, and whenever it was their turn they just moved along another seat and then got up to do a speech. And there was a kind of a time ringing bell element to things but no one was too stressed, it wasn't too formal, it was, yeah, it was really good to do talk. Um, so yeah, into the conversation and networking side of things, so there was a lot of opportunity to chat to people. Some people came in groups, if they if they had a few winners from the same university, they tended to stick together. Um, I was part of one of those groups who all came from the same university, but there was definitely a lot of time to meet new people. So every, I don't know, two hours or so, they would have a coffee break or a lunch break, and there was... The room was kind of set up, um, I guess, with like big circular dinner tables that always had water and stuff on it. Um, but then afterwards, most people just stood outside at the kind of buffet eating area. Um, and then there was kind of some standing tables. So everyone was quite mingly um, and free to chat, at least in the first day or so. They were really receptive of just complete strangers going up and chatting. Um, and I found one of the easiest ways to approach speaking to complete strangers was basically say like oh have you have you got a talk planned or something and then talk about your work kind of that way because it can be quite stressful to go up to a stranger and be like hello I don't know you um but yeah I tended to go in with like a hey have you got a talk planned today was an easier way to go about things I met some cool people from Canada some from Australia so there was it was genuinely a global summit um there was people from everywhere um, and since people had came from so far and so wide, there was a lot of people who were interested to see Ireland and see Dublin. So the programme was over three days and most people stayed for most of the talks, but I don't think anyone stayed for the whole day of all three. There was quite a few people who were taking little trips here and there. Two most popular ones that I knew of were the Guinness Factory, which was quite close by. Um, and I went to Kilmainham Jail one afternoon, which was really really cool. Um, a lot of history involved in that. I would recommend if you have a little afternoon or morning then yeah those two were definitely top of the tourist list um, and quite nearby with I think a one bus journey kind of distance away and across from Kilmainham Jail I also went to the art gallery which did have one day a week I think was free for students so I got in to see quite a lot of the art gallery for free which was fantastic. So yeah there was a lot of networking going on um, in and out with the venue. I also signed up for the wine reception which was on the first night and that was a really great idea. So basically they let us stay on after all of the talks and they brought out bottles of wine and we just chatted. And I think that's when the best networking actually happened is after a glass of wine. Um, yeah that was a really great night and afterwards we kind of continued on so we'd made a little group of people who were getting on really well and we decided to go out for a meal afterwards. So yeah, I would definitely recommend, if you can, stay for the wine reception. It was really good. But yeah, overall it was fantastic. The kind of elevator pitches, which were like the shorter five minute ones, some of them were absolutely super. And we got some really good conversations going afterwards with, you know, people you were interested in. But there was so many people talking. It was really hard to remember if someone had done a talk or not. So kind of my initial introductions of, have you got a talk coming today or not? Didn't really work out too well when it was like the third day. And I was like, hey, have you got a talk coming? And they were like, yeah. I've already done a talk and you didn't remember it. So yeah, that was 
a little bit stressful. I had like one conversation with someone who was quite offended that I hadn't remembered that they'd done a talk, but I don't know, it was really difficult because there were so many, so many people there. Um, yeah, so I think there was 200 people there. Okay, yeah, so I find it so over 200 people there um, in 2018. And I was very stressed beforehand about what to wear because it was difficult to tell. I don't think there's very much information um, from people like this sitting down and talking about their experience. So it was really hard to tell what to wear to the conference. I basically settled for kind of work black trousers and a nice blouse. So there was definitely a big range of what people were taking for the dress code. So I think towards the last day, everyone had kind of chilled into smart casual. So like a blouse or like a jumper and a shirt something like that. Um, definitely not full suits. I don't think anyone was wearing trainers, so anything between would be perfect. But I think there was a ball for the global winners, so I think that was maybe more fancy. I think that was like black tie dress code, but I wasn't invited to that, so I just saw the pictures at the end. Um, but yeah, I think I worried too much about what to wear, because I don't remember anything else anyone really wore um, if it was in the middle of not being too smart and not being too casual. So was the summit worth it? It was definitely worth it for me to go. I had a really, really great time and got a lot out of it. Um, and presenting there as well was really exciting for me. I love presenting there. Well, I came back and got published in my university blog, which was super fun. Um, I wrote a little section about my work for people who weren't scientists, which was really fun. Um, I can link that below. And I also really enjoyed networking. I would definitely recommend if you are in your final year of uni or if that was you won two years ago, then you should definitely submit your best piece of work. I think they're looking for things that are A grades, so it's definitely worth your time. All you need to do is make an account, make everything anonymous, and then submit. And you can submit up to three pieces of work, so yeah, why not? Yeah, I hope that insight into the undergraduate awards and the summit was useful and feel free to stick around if you want to see more videos. I usually talk about science things, so yeah, I will see you in the next video. Bye! Yeah, another thing that also happened was that I got a load of missed phone calls because I didn't answer them um, from Ireland. But turns out it was actually just the undergraduate awards that were trying to phone me and say like, hey, do you want to come to the summit? Um, so yeah, don't be confused if you get some phone calls from Ireland. It's just the undergraduate awards people asking if you want to come to the summit.